I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land, bringing you those top stories making headlines every Monday to Thursday. Where can you find us, you ask? Well, stay tuned because I will tell you a little later in the broadcast. But today is Yom HaShoah Holocaust Memorial Day in Israel. And if you missed our special broadcast yesterday, it is up on our various social media. But let's take a look at events since sunset last night. Now, at around sunset, restaurants started to close and television programming swapped over to be centered around Holocaust remembrance and education. At 8 o'clock in the evening, the annual tekes or ceremony at Yad Vashem, which is Israel's national Holocaust museum and memorial in Jerusalem took place. Now this event hasn't taken place with a live audience for two years because of the global pandemic but last night to a packed audience it uh, happened with speeches from dignitaries and included President Herzog and Prime Minister Bennett. Now what has been seen as a departure from his predecessor, the Prime Minister did not mention Iran but what he did speak about was the importance of unity especially here in Israel. He cautioned against rising anti-Semitism and what some are seeing as his answer to Ukrainian President Zelensky's speech in the Knesset just last month, making the comparison between the situation in Ukraine to the Holocaust, the Prime Minister cautioned against these kind of comparisons, saying the Holocaust stands alone in its horror and the sign of its genocide, but he also spoke about the rebirth of Israel and how Israel as a nation and as a people has been reborn in our modern state. A very, very moving speech and this was followed by the lighting of the torches by six Holocaust survivors. What I found quite moving was that one of the survivors who was scheduled to light a torch passed away between the recording of his story and the torch lighting ceremony and the torch was lit by his son which shows and proves to you the fragility of the lives of our survivors and as time marches on as we said yesterday the imperative is on us on you and on me to keep their memory and their stories alive especially for future generations now 10 a.m this morning the annual siren uh, welled out across the country and I don't know about you if you're Israeli and you experienced it today but for me it feels a lot more sorrowful every year. Now the siren is set off by our IDF Home Front Command Division and this morning it, the button was pushed by a very very special man survivor Ruven Eyal and his granddaughter who is serving in the Home Front Command and her name is Shani. Now at the moment the annual march of the living is happening in Poland. This is the annual march between Auschwitz and uh, uh, Birkenau and this commemorates the lives of the six million who were murdered during the Holocaust and the over one million men, women and children murdered at Auschwitz death camp. But what is quite extraordinary this year is that yesterday we brought you the story of together vouch for each other Arab-Israeli youth from Israel who are in Poland this week to learn more about the Holocaust. But today joining survivors and members of Jewish communities around the world were Sharaka. These are representatives from Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates and Morocco as part of our Abraham Accords uh, cooperation. They are taking a part in this, as well as 103 Arab Israeli youth from the youth movement Atidna. Now, this is the first time many of them have been out of the country and they described uh, being in Auschwitz as being something beyond what they could have Imagine They said, you know, when you read about it, you, you, you kind of get an understanding, but nothing prepares you for being there. And this year, the marches were joined by Ukrainian refugees as well. 
Also happening earlier were uh, ceremonies again at Yad Vashem and at the Knesset. And the Knesset was joined by the president of the German Bundestag, uh, Barbara Bass, who gave her speech. But also, while she was at Yad Vashem, she filled out a page of testimony in the name of a survivor from the town that she comes from. And she spoke about the importance of uh, c continuing education and honoring memory. And we thank President Bass for being with us here. It shows the incredible relationship that is growing between Israel and Germany as we don't forget our past but we look for, for ways to educate and fight anti-Semitism together. Now, the Times of, the, of Israel reported earlier today that the head of the Shin Bet, Ronen Abar, met with Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas last week to look at ways to try and calm the tension on the Temple Mount. During this Ramadan, Israel has experienced a wave of terror that saw 14 people killed. But we've also seen an increase in tensions on the Temple Mount. And for the last couple of Fridays, protesters clashing with security forces inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Now, last Friday, what was interesting is that there wasn't a uh, police presence and Palestinian worshippers who came to the mosque to pray for Ramadan clashed with Palestinian youth inside, many of whom were wearing shoes and lighting firecrackers, which set small fires around the mosque. Now, last night, about 100,000 Palestinians ascended the Temple Mount for nighttime prayers. And as we approach the end of Ramadan, the IDF is preparing for possible tensions, especially tomorrow being the last Friday of the holy month of Ramadan. And they have deployed six battalions across the West Bank and across the security fence to try and maintain a security presence and also to mend holes in the fence which has allowed terrorists to infiltrate Israel and carry out terror attacks. Twice this week, Prime Minister Bennett and his family have received threatening letters, both containing bullets. A second letter addressed to one of Prime Minister Bennett's sons was received earlier today. Now, of course, this is under police gag, so we don't know too many details, but we do know that the uh, perpetrator is believed to be somebody well known to the family. The Shin Bet and the police are investigating, and it is not believed that the Prime Minister and his family are in immediate danger. Now, a couple of days ago, I told you that 50 cent or one and a half shekels, as it could be known here in, in uh, Israel with the dollar shekel conversion, was coming to play a concert in July. Well, his concert literally sold out within minutes, proving that Israelis this summer are prepared to party like it's our birthday. Next week, we welcome Rockers Maroon 5 for two shows, as well as Deep purple as they kick off their world tour. All believers, hang on to your hormones. The Beebs is also headed to Israel this summer. If you don't know who the Beebs is, it's Justin Bieber. And uh, 50 Cent, or Fiddy, as some of you call him, has added another show that's soon to be sold out as well. So what are you doing this summer? If you're not doing anything, head on over to Israel. The party's over here. We cannot wait to welcome you all. It's been far too long. And join us for the party of the summer. And that brings me to the end of this week's broadcast. But don't forget that if you're looking for fantastic reading material this weekend, look no further than our website at www.layoftheland.online. We have original content. Check out our Yom HaShoah coverage there as well. Don't forget to join our Facebook community. We're at Lottel's site. Join us by giving us a like, a follow, and please, if you come across our content, share it. Sharing is caring, but it's also a great way to get news from Israel out to as many people as possible. And our YouTube channel is The Israel Brief. So if you're watching us right now, 
do us a solid click that red subscribe button it goes a long way to improving our statistics on the google which means more people get to hear the news from israel and we're on twitter where i see some people are leaving some people are coming back oh it's a balagan but you can find us there we are a constant we're at lay of the land five and you can just hit that follow button and interact with us there as well so as we head into the weekend, I want to wish you all a safe and a peaceful weekend. Shabbat Shalom wherever you are. We are getting ready for next week's Independence Day and Israel will be bedecked in blue and white and uh, we'll be bringing you those top stories and how we're celebrating next week. So uh, just a reminder, I'm Rolene Marks. This is the Israel Brief. Thank you for watching and Shabbat Shalom.